Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Last Game Hunter. I'm Paul, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi 3 and a really, 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 really cool case that I picked up. So everything I'm going to show in this video, I will leave links below. So if you wish to purchase these items, you can do so. I'll try and make it simple as Amazon. And yeah, let's see what this is all about. Okay guys, of course, to start this whole thing off, I'm going to show you the Nest, Nest Pie. The Nest Pie? Nest Pie case. And this case is just absolutely beautiful. I will unbox it real soon, but in this video, we're going to be using the Nest Pie case. We're going to be using the Raspberry Pi 3. Of course, you're going to need a power adapter or another means to power it. And in this kit, I have the heat sinks, which I believe is recommended, in my opinion, if you're going to be putting in an enclosed case. Now, for storage, in this video, I'm going to use a 64 gig Kingston. Again, I'll leave links for everything that I picked up in this video, so you can do it yourself. For now, I'm just going to use a USB, I think this is a Retrolink uh, Super NES controller. And you want to use something like this for one reason, major reason the extra buttons for when you map out. It also helps you control and go back on your uh, your emulation. So guys, let's check this stuff out. Let's unbox it. Hey guys, so let's check out what's in these boxes. Uh, I mean, memory card. Gamepad. First we'll open up the Raspberry Pi. So, you have your Pi box. Power adapter. And your heat sinks. I think the most important part of your purchase is the heat sinks. So now we can get rid of that. Okay, so a pie, I don't know, I mean, everybody's probably seen these before. It's just a little mini computer, little quad core computer. Oh, isn't that cute? Comes in a little, huh. I own three of these, and this is the first time it came in a little paper bag. This is pretty cool. So, resealable for freshness. That is pretty crazy. Came in a paper bag. And there's your Raspberry Pi, guys. The little tiny itsy bitsy motherboard. HDMI out. You have your power, uh, audio. Of course, you have your expansion ports, which we will be using for this case for over here, the headers. So we can do power and reset, which is really cool. And we will be using these ports on the internal because I'll show you this case in a few minutes and it's really cool. So that is really awesome. Okay, so the unboxing. The Mac Daddy of the whole show. Okay. So we have a couple little things here. We have this, which is just a screwdriver. Just a little chintzy screwdriver gets the job done. So at this point, don't need any tools other than the knife to open up the bag. And we have instructions. The instruction manual telling us how to, I guess, hook up. Yeah, power buttons and stuff tells you where to, what pins and so on. That is helpful. 
I, I mean, I've been trying to look up schematics and stuff to do manual stuff on my own, and here it is, just handed to me. So, the whole reason for this. The Nest Pie. This is a complete replica of a Nintendo NES. You have your power button, reset button, just like the real machine. Instead of the other two ports, you have two USB ports here. Oh, and this is sweet. Two more USB ports, and your network jack. So if you want to hardwire for network, or for transferring files, because this thing, a lot of the transfers are done, if you don't have a image, uh, would be done through um, FTP. Now let's open it up. Oh, before we do that, <laughs> there's some really cool stuff. So here's your memory card slot, so you don't even have to, uh, if you're swapping or doing anything, you can just do it on the fly. You don't have to uh, open the case up, like I have to do with my uh, custom-built Genesis. And then on the back, of course, you'll have your power connector, your HDMI port, and your... Um, audio or AV. So let's open it up. Okay, so here we go. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you before I take out the screws is on the bottom they did an exact replica of, when I say it's a replica, this is a pretty much a replica. So like the original one right down to this expansion slot. Well here it's a place to store your micro SD card. So I thought that was a cool touch, and I give props to this, it's pretty cool. So on the inside here, we have your um, power, your uh, main board here for your, here's your USBs, your other USBs, and your network. And this is what's so nice about this, if I had to do this on my own from scratch like I did with the Genesis Mini, I had to do all this myself, I had to custom cut wires, solder wires and everything, and, and wire it all in. And then, which I wish my Genesis did have, is the power buttons, which I'm going to now know how it's done, and I will do an upgrade on this system. So, as you can see here, really, really cool. Amazingly done. The, the build quality is super solid. This feels and looks like a real little NES, like a, like a classic. In fact, might be able to do a comparison after, but I think they're about the same size. So let's get the board mounted up and everything, and, and let's see where we go from here. All right, so now I mounted the board off camera. It was the easiest thing in the world. So basically, uh, you plug in the power switch, reset switch, which is the last pins. You can't even mess it up. There's even a picture that comes with it to plug it in and then the network and the USB cable. That's it for what plugs into this motherboard as per the build. Then there's some screws that came with the kit, two black ones and six regular screws to, to mount the, the top part. Two black ones go in on the inside so the board doesn't fall out. But as you can see here now, everything was a marriage made in heaven. Everything lined up beautifully. The card slot, I checked it over everything. I don't have to worry about uh, fit and finish. And that's amazing. So let's put the cover on. So now there was... Oh, and another thing. Toss this thing. You want a magnetic tip screwdriver. And I have screwdrivers like this that I use for doing my builds, mods, cleaning, and rebuilds. Or repairs. Trust me. Every time I tried to use a screwdriver to put a screw in, it fell off, it fell off, it fell off. You could never, because it's so small in there. So use a magnet tip screwdriver. So let's put this together. Never over tighten when you feel that it's tight. Let go. That's my tip of the day. I build enough stuff, repair enough stuff. That you over tighten something, done. It'll never be the same again. La da da, la da dee. I'm putting the screws in it. G. <laughs> G.
and the last screw. And now, honestly, it feels like I have an NES Classic in my hands that can play everything. Okay. So now it is completely put together. Now it's a complete unit. I'm not missing or having holes. So my SD card goes in here. Now I'm going to use an ISO image that I already have created or someone else has created, maybe I should say, that I got my hands on. And that's what I'm going to use for this. I am not going to link software or uh, ROMs or anything like that. I just want to make that clear. This video is not about telling you how to do piracy. That's not what I'm about. If you guys would like a tutorial or a setup video that can help you out, you can comment below and I'll do what I can as I am not the best person to be doing that, but I can try my best. So, again, we have the two USB ports in the front, power, reset, now I have two more USBs here, and the network. Again, if I want to transfer files after via FTP, or if I want to do just a whole new image, I can take out the card, pop in a new card, whatever, which is great, because with, like I said, my classic Genesis that I had made, unlike with my classic Genesis that I made, as you can see, I did my own cuts and everything, and I, I did a great job. This machine looks phenomenal, in my opinion. It looks like Sega made this. In fact, the shell is licensed by Sega, and it's built pretty decent. So what it was originally was a USB hub. You can find them on eBay, but they're really expensive. And I made all four of these ports after a mod, pretty simple mod, because the cord came out the back here, and it was a really long cord to go to your computer to make it a hub. So I cut, edit, and delete that, and mounted it into the board. So now this thing is like a complete little Genesis Mini. So, and again, nicely, pretty much the same size as well. So it's kind of true to the, you know, this, this is usually a little bit bigger than the original NES, and it's a little bit bigger here. So it's kind of neat. Now I'm happy because now I have a complete little family and I will set this up and show you guys a quick video of some of the games and let you know how it works. Okay everybody, this is now hours later. I finally get this thing up and running and I decided to make this just a Nintendo based console. So you have Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64. So that's what I put on here so far because for what I've done, it's every game that existed for each of these consoles, artwork, video, everything. So this did take a long time, but I found a way of doing things that's so much easier, it's unbelievable. So what I'm going to do with my Genesis one I made now is I will make that one all Sega instead of being a multi-platform and then eventually I'm going to make a super console which I think I'm going to put a 256 SSD hard drive in no SD cards and let it rock so it'll be like the everything goes console with the most powerful Raspberry Pi uh, under the hood so let's check out a few things just to show you this thing running the uh, front end looks beautiful and let's go into Nintendo. Let's just pick something random here. Uh, let's go to Adventure Island. I have all the audio turned off as I keep getting flagged, so I'm not going to risk anything more here. So basically, you can see this running. As I figure out my controls here. So I'm using the Super NES gamepad. USB because I thought that would be the best for needed buttons. Whoa! Whoop -a -boo. I make my own sound. This is playing perfect. Boom! I like that skateboard. So now to go back, I just hit start and pause at the same time, or start and select at the same time, and I can pick whatever I wish. So 
So as you can see, I pretty much have everything you could ever dream of on this console. Still working on trying to see some artwork or a video in the uh, right side here, but I'll figure that out. And then we can go to Super Nintendo. I'll just pick something random here again, just to... We all know what everything looks like. Well, that looked kind of cool. So let's try this out. I haven't actually played this game before, ever. Oh, uh, which were the guns? Which were the guns? I guess that's a gun. I haven't actually killed anything yet. <laughs> oh, there's some bigger guns. There we go. Uh, this could be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to enjoy this game. So anyway, select and pause, or select and start. Oh, there we go, look at that. Now it's playing in the actual thing. So the video, I guess, after you start playing them, some footage end up going over into the side. Oh, here we go. Maybe it just needed time to actually load it all. Boom. I kind of thought I did download all the stuff, so here it is. Now this thing is looking gorgeous. So it's a Nintendo Classic uh, or the, the original Nintendo shell. Um, I decided to keep everything, again, Nintendo. I will be adding um, Game Boy Advance and stuff to it later. It's just this has been, oh, it, it, basically it's been about five, six hours of me putting this stuff on the machine. So I figured I want to finish the video, get it out for you guys, and let you know that I can add to it, which is great. And this is so simple as just to add internet network wire to it and let it do what I pick it to do. It's unbelievable. So now we're going to go back by hitting B. Game Boy Color. Whatever. Just pick whatever. Just to try it out for you guys. I'm very proud of this. This is a really nice build. And this is a great console I think that me and my kids are going to enjoy. Um, I still, trust me, want to play the original media. But this is great if I want to leave something in the living room and full HD. So I don't have to have a pile of consoles out there. And that to me is phenomenal. Go, 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 go. The people on YouTube do not want to see this. Alright. Do I have guns? Do I have... Oh, I have some sort of... Hey. Why aren't you... I don't know. Maybe you're with me. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, I've never played the game before. I have no idea what I'm playing. I'm going to try N64. One, this controller is not designed for it. i got to order some. Let's see how it actually uh, works. One, with the controller. And two, how is this machine going to handle it? Rumble pack not found. No way. Okay, we're just going to quickly try and go breeze through this. I just want to see what happens on a Super NES gamepad on an N64 ROM set. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so now we're going to do this test. Oh, the helicopter is... Oh... I'm guessing you need the other. Yeah, I'm getting. You need the center stick to. Uh, I think. Yeah. I can raise, lower, go side to side, but I have no forward. Unless when I hit a button. Oh, there's backwards. So maybe. Whoa! 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 I will kill you. I will die. So I gotta figure that out. It looks like I can't do... Oh, I'm still alive. How's that possible? Oh, there we go. We can play without the controller. Look at that. Let's get up altitude. Woohoo!
Okay. So you can play N64 without an N64 gamepad. That's awesome. This system is working. It's actually working pretty good. That game is actually running very smooth. And the GUI looks beautiful. I now love the fact that uh, you have your video playing in the uh, side screen, which is pretty cool. And I love the way this person created the sidebars and everything on the on the emulator. So there you have it. The machine is running. Again, if you want any information on what I did, comment below. Maybe private message me and I can send you uh, some info on how to do this. Okay, guys, till next time, please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you. It's all fun and games.